Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the relational algebra rapid fire quiz. If this quiz is computer networking oriented, I would have used the term protocol for the rules. If this is cryptography, I would have used standards or protocols or policies or rules. As we are dealing this quiz in DBMS, let's set the constraints. Two constraints here. Number one, there are seven questions. Each question is given 10 seconds to answer. And constraint number two, once you have attended all the questions, please post the number of correct answers you got in the comment section. Let's start the quiz. All the best. Let's step into question number one. The question is, relational algebra is a dash query language that takes two relations as input and produces another relation as an output. The options are option A, procedural, option B, non-procedural, option C, structural and option D, rational. Your time starts now. I hope you are done. The right answer is option A, procedural, because it instructs how to execute a task with the set of following commands. I mean to say, we need to specify what to do and also how to do. Let's step into question number two. The question is, an attribute is a dash in a relation. The options are, option A, row, option B, column, option C, value, and option D, tuple. Your time starts now. Your 10 seconds is over. And the right answer is option B, column. Because an attribute is a column in RDBMS. A row is referred as a tuple. A value is a constant. A tuple is a row. Let's step into question number three. The question is, which one of the options given below refers to the degree or arity of a relation in relational database systems? This question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2023. The options are Option A, number of attributes of its relation schema. Option B, number of tuples stored in the relation. Option C, number of entries in the relation. And Option D, number of distinct domains of its relation schema. Your 10 seconds time starts now. Stop. The right answer is, it's the number of attributes of its relation schema. The number of attributes or number of columns in the relation is referred as the degree or the arity of a relation. Let's say if there is an employee relation that has employee number, employee name and the city, these three columns or attributes, then the arity is 3 or the degree of this relation is 3. Let's step into question number 4. The question is, with regard to the expressive power of the formal relational query languages, which of the following statements is true? And this question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2002. The options are, option A, relational algebra is more powerful than relational calculus. Option B, relational algebra has the same power as relational calculus. Option C, relational algebra has the same power as safe relational calculus and option D, none of the above. Your 10 seconds starts now. Stop. The right answer for this is option C, relational algebra has the same power as safe relational calculus. Actually, safe relational calculus is a subset of the relational calculus that excludes unsafe operations such as division and difference. In fact, relational algebra and safe relational calculus have same expressive power, meaning that any query that is expressible in one language that can also be expressed in the other language. I mean, if a query can be expressed in relational algebra, 
it can also be expressed in safe relational calculus. Likewise, if a query can be expressed in safe relational calculus, it can also be expressed in relational algebra. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Let's step into question number 5. The question is, which of the following makes it possible for entities to share a relationship? Option A, single-valued attributes. Option B, multi-valued attributes. Option C, stored and derived attributes. And option D, common attributes. Your 10 seconds starts now. Stop. The right answer for this question is option D, common attributes. How? Let's assume two relations. If there is no common attribute in these two relations, how can a relationship be formed? We may have single attributes, we may have multi-valued attributes, we may have stored or derived attributes, that doesn't matter. But if we want entities or tables to share relationship, we need at least one common attribute in both the relations. I hope the answer is clear to you. Let's now move on to question number 6. The question is, which of the following is true about referential integrity rule? Option A. Each primary key must be unique and not null. Option B. For each foreign key, there must be a corresponding primary key. Option C. A common attribute in two relations is sufficient. And option D. All attributes must have meaningful names. Your 10 seconds of your time starts now. Stop. In general, all options are correct. Because primary key must be unique and not null. Foreign key, there must be a corresponding primary key. If there is a foreign key in one relation, that is associated with the primary key of the other relation. A common attribute in two relations is also required in order to maintain relationship. All attributes must have meaningful names. It is one of the best practices. Actually, the question is related to referential integrity rule. When we talk about referential integrity rule, primary key and foreign key comes into action. So, option B is the right answer here. For each foreign key, there must be a corresponding primary key. Let's now visit the last question. The question is, in a banking database, let us assume there is a relation named customer. Which of the following attribute in the customer relation can be a primary key attribute? The options are, Option A, customer ID. Option B, customer name. Option C, SSN, social security number. And option D, date of birth. Your 10 seconds starts now. Stop. So the answers for this can be customer ID, social security number. The reason is, Many customers can have the same name. Many customers may have the same date of birth. But customer ID and social security number are unique. As well as it should be not null. Every customer should have a customer ID. Every customer in the United States will have a social security number. In India, the equivalent for social security number is the Aadhaar number. I hope you guys enjoyed this rapid fire quiz. Please do not forget to comment the number of right answers you have got in this quiz. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.